and I'll be acquitted when haters don't stop. I'm living proof, living proof. It's pretty safe to say. What's going on guys, Proof here, and today I'm bringing you another Card Fight Area Live video. Today I'm going to be featuring the, the Abyss Diablo Stride deck with Revenger support. And thank you for the support for the last video featuring the Sweep Command Stride deck, I really appreciate it. And I hope you guys enjoyed this one that I'm going to be putting on today. And I'm going to keep this short because I'm sure the whole Vanguard world is familiar with the Legend deck support. So. I'm going to go through my current version of the deck. I've been uh, tinkering around with this one for a little while with the original version using Blaster Dark Diablo just as a, a secondary support stride to be able to go into um, Phantom Blaster Diablo faster and use his skill in the middle portion of the game. But this version features all Revenger um, grade 3 options with Abyss and uh, Mordred Phantom. Just to focus on not shutting down the entirety of the Revenger support, even though I could use True Drag Ruler, it's only a, a one turn um, option. So if I'm currently on Blasted Dark and I go into Phantom Blasted Diablo, I wouldn't be able to retire potentially two units. I, couldn't, I would just be able to retire the one with uh, Blasted Dark Diablo's on stride ability. But let me go into the deck real quick and then try to find you guys a game. Of course, it's going to be for Phantom Blast Diablo. If you guys listen to my podcast uh, that I released on Sunday, I put him at number one for the, the current best stride in the game. That could be biased just because I love, I love when it was released. I was extremely hyped for it, but it's incredible. It does everything the deck could want in a stride unit. It, of course, it's going to retire your own units because that's what shadows do with their grade three bosses. But he can restrict your opponent's guard if they aren't careful with how they manage their field setup. And with the Revenger support in the deck and all your hearts being Revengers, you can shut down your opponent's field before your before you attack with Diablo and be able to just make them take the take the extra critical attack for uh, nothing. Or I said that wrong <laughs> for. A little bit easier. For example, if you're on, if they're, if you're in legion or not in legion, if you're in stride, and you your opponent has three rear guards out, and you have both these guys in your hand and enough counter blast, you can essentially force them to take your attack because they won't have enough to pay the the cost to start to call, uh, call guards from hand. I have one Dark Knight uh, Enzian or, or Fiancian, that's hard to say. Uh, he's the guy that says when you put him on Vanguard, retire a unit, he gets plus 7,000, and if he hits the van, your opponent's Vanguard, uh, you pick a unit to retire. It's good against certain matchups like Link and Joker, which can lock down your front row, so it leaves you with a back row unit that can't do anything for a turn. And it's good for, since it's not specific to your rear guard, you can retire Swordbreakers after you call them out with Judge Bow, depending on if your opponent uh, has things that um, restrict you from having a lot of field outs, such, such as Kagura, Link, and Joker, like I mentioned before. I like it. It it helps towards uh, Diablo, and he's a nice little stride to have in the cut. <laughs> uh, two Grim Recruiter right now. I like them as a first stride option against most decks because it allows me to pull out Sword Breakers if uh, they retire a Judge Bow or somehow get Judge Bow out the way. Uh, he's also there for G assist because he's most likely going to be him and then either Blizza or or Effie here to get picked to get out the stride zone. That's why I have two here instead of one. I don't have Drag Ruler in this version. I had him in Blaster Dark option, like I mentioned before, just as a way to. Since he's a Revenger, it doesn't lock me out of all my, my Revenger skills if I have to stride into him. But in this version, I'm going to leave him out for now. Of course, for Abyss, for Mordred, you know what they do. I'm not going to go into them too much in the, the deck overview. I love the deck. I love the the Abyss option. That's why I'm going to continue to play when the Dark Legend deck comes out. For Blaster Dark Revenger and for Blaster Dark Revenger Abyss, they're, they don't, they're not restricted to Stride or Legion. 
So you can use them in the middle portion of the game early to force advantage out of your opponent's hand and keep pressure on them while playing towards your end game option of either Abyss or Diablo. And real quick on Diablo, I know I mentioned that he can be more of a setup more than a finisher. Uh, to clarify, I'm not saying he can't be a finisher because clearly he can because he gets a crit and can restrict guard, but he's he's flexible or adaptable to what your opponent has because it goes off regardless. So if your opponent has PGs in hand, they're going to want to protect themselves from the extra critical attack. So by doing his effects, you get two of your opponent's rear guards off the field and you get a perfect guard out the way for Abyss in the following turn, assuming Abyss is your heart, because then you have a recent option where your opponent's at four or more damage and you lose your back all your critical triggers to pressure them even more so that you can end the game after Diablo soften them, soften them up a little bit for you. So what I like about that, it's flexible in how you can use them because it's gonna go off regardless, all things considered. And if you hear a little crunching over to the side, that's that's our little puppy. He's uh, chewing on his bone right now, so hopefully you guys don't mind. <laughs> I have two mana here and two um, dark dark knight made in Maka. Uh, originally, I had three mana here and no Maka, but I wanted to try out Maka with um, the extra support, just to be able to have another way to call out sword breakers and be able to get Charon on the field as a free option, just to lower the cost of Diablo. Uh, all things considered. I like mana here because it's a it's an easy two units for stacking purposes in the middle portion of the game if I if I stride early enough into Diablo or in the late game for Abyss as a as a snap option for um getting another Revenger unit onto the field. And Maka's here because I, I definitely wanted to play four and four here so I split the duties up between these two. I tried three Maka and three Blasted Dark and I didn't like it that much so I went back to four and as for the grade ones I play four Mockler because Revenger and it gives me an emergency unit to call out if I'm on Abyss and I'm, if I'm, and I'm lacking. Uh, two Masquerade, I love Masquerade, he's a workhorse, it comes in handy early game for uh, the grade one and grade two turns assuming your opponent doesn't go after him. Two Charon. Uh, Charon uh, is the, the quote unquote stride enabler, even though it doesn't have a plus two um, from hand for stride cost. But that's mitigated because if you have a grade three blaster when you would retire for one of your skills, he counts as two. Since he's not a revenger, it doesn't count for Abyss, but it definitely counts for Diablo. So you definitely want to try to have him out because you can end up sacking two units instead of three which definitely helps your field presence, especially in the mirror matchup. And it's, it's great to have around. Three Dorn, three Dorrent, uh, old, old school Dorn to match up with Blasted Dark Revenger. I didn't have the space here for um, the new Cloudus or the, the Cloudus Dorrent column. Uh, if Maka doesn't end up working out, I may have space for it, but then I'd have to give up Charon for it, which I don't want to do. Two Black Wing Swordbreaker. Uh, of course, she's here. She's she's hyped now because of all the deck can do is call out Grade One, so she's good to have. So I don't have her as a two of because she's still a six K booster. And then for triggers, I have nine crit, three draw, four heal. I'm used to going twelve critical, but I wanted to try out a few draws in here. I may go four just because I know Diablo can gain an extra critical. So we'll see how it goes. It's nice to have it as a as a small defensive option, but if it doesn't work, I can always go back to 12 crit like I'm used to. And I'm gonna find a game. I'm gonna pause the video until I find it. And hope you guys enjoy. All right, we got ourselves a game here. <clears throat> Excuse me. It's going against Blau. Haven't seen Blau in a long time, so it'll be an interesting matchup. I know Revengers can have a decent matchup against Nova's. Especially since I'm able to retire units fairly easily with through the majority of my skills. Ooh, this hand is not good, so <laughs> I'm gonna put this back. I kinda wanna put Swordbreaker back, but I'd rather have the chance to ride up versus having the extra pluses of having Swordbreaker. I don't think it's worth the risk right now, because I'd rather go for the Okay, okay. 
Ew. I hate the shuffle on CFA sometimes, but it is what it is. Alright, so that's good. So I'm gonna ride Swordbreaker because she has no use in my hand. She's as much, she may as well use her as a first ride option. And so against Blau, it's gonna be interesting to see what kind of version he has. If it's gonna be more of a, a Nova version, or not Nova version, because of course it's gonna be Nova version. Let's see, top side, Nova because I don't have any 10Ks in my hand. That's unfortunate. Wow, okay. Thanks, Shuffler. I appreciate it. <laughs> I was going to say, I wonder if it's going to be like a, <clears throat> excuse me, like more of a, like an Aja Kaiser, Kaiser version with 12 grade threes, but we'll see when we get along there. I'm going to put Doran here as a option because I'm going to try and build up some pressure before I go into my grade threes to lessen his hand potentially. So we'll see. Guard that, of course, and then see if he catches crit. What you gonna do? Nope, mana. Alright. I used to play Blouse back in the day. There's Zonda, so I'm not sure exactly what kind of version he's gonna play. I'm not too experienced with some of the Nova builds outside of uh, Pure Victor and. Uh, Okay, so it is an Azure Kaiser version, like I thought. Alright, so I'm gonna, yeah, I'm gonna take that one. My hand is not not the great on defensive options right now. But at least I can kill a Sazanda, and so that means I got two out the way. Two out of four. <laughs> Yeah, outside of Victor and the Mega Flare versions, I'm not too well versed in some of the options that uh, Novas have. Let's see, retire Sazanda. Get him out the way. I wish I had Mana earlier because I could have got rid of Bear Down Samurai, which is a huge threat with the Azure Kaiser support, being able to gain plus 15 tops. Which doesn't seem scary nowadays with like Jingle Flower Dragon and whatnot out. So he might guard this one if not. That's fine with me because I get two free cards off. Nice, got stride. A lot of stride options. <laughs> Judge Pal. I'm going to call out Swordbreaker and then probably grab Charon. That way. Boom. And then grab myself a new Charon. Now I have eight cards in hand. Actually, now I have a 10k, which helps a lot. And yeah, the deck is, from what I've been playing, it's really scary, like to nobody's surprise, just because of what the deck is able to do throughout the whole portion of the game. So it's a threat, all encompassing, and not just a threat once you're in stride or legion turns. And the stride and the legion definitely help support the deck, which makes it, you know highly more scary than what you can imagine. It's Azure Kaiser. I'm not surprised he didn't go into Muscle Shriek and get rid of Charon, but he's trying to go for the big pluses, the, the big plays. So, definitely going to take this out next turn in some capacity. Yeah, may as well guard that one because I'm gonna take the Vanguard attack. So grade one Blau, so no grade three. But he got column support for next turn. But I can try it. I'm actually gonna since I have a decent setup here. I'm actually gonna stride into Effie. Four side of PG. Retire Swordbreaker, which has no use for me anymore. Gain 7,000. I actually have the ability to get rid of both his rear guards now because of the on hit from Effie here. I'm actually gonna call. I'm actually gonna call out this Mordred here. So that way I get more column pressure. Be able to definitely get rid of this guy next turn. 
So FD is definitely good in situations like this where my opponent's hand is low, so that no matter what, I can never get rid of something because I can always attack the rear guard with my own. My uh, crit, give power to the side, crit vanguard, and then another mana. So he heals, which is fine. Retired him. And then I'm gonna throw him into here. Because he might want to protect it, but he's gonna have to get rid of these three cards over here, or at least two cards to protect it, because I know he has another samurai grade two in his hand. And so next turn which I am going to survive for all intents and purposes. I'm going to go into Diablo and try to beat him down even more with the with the skill because I'm, I'm definitely going to have the, the three rear guards to retire. And I'm definitely just wanting to showcase the deck off because I'm actually this is what ideally what my deck is going to be when the, the new support comes out. And is he still here? Because <laughs> I know sometimes the system will kick you out. Ah, oh, he left. I don't know if he left left or if he uh, had like a disconnection or something. But, well, we, we saw how this game was going to go. Here's what was going to happen. I was going to take him out. And then I was going to take, or either take him out or take out three cards from his hand. Or two cards from his hand. And then if he did guard, I was going to attack in that, or with this side as well, just to get it out the way, because I'd rather give myself the ability to survive the following turn and then stride with this abyss here into Diablo, do his skill to, and assuming if my opponent didn't have the pressure, I would have found a way to try to restrict his guard, because he's going to, likely if this died, he's going to call out these two make a column here and stride if he had the ability to which I'm assuming he did which is probably why he left <laughs> no that's me <laughs> and so he's gonna make a column here which means he would have three rear guards plus his uh, stride stuff so I could have attacked the rear guard force card out of his hand attacked with Diablo with his skill make him sack two guys which likely would have been the back or this guy and then this guy here and PG, if not, he's gonna keep the whole field and take an extra critical attack and could have been a, a trigger, a critical trigger on the back end there and then push for game. If not, I still would have had a good hand size, weighed him out, maybe I would have accumulated another blasted dark by then to be able to unflip so that I could go into this easily and then we stand and try to win the game there. So I'm gonna try to get another game since that one ended and I'll see you guys in a little bit. All right, <clears throat> excuse me. We got ourselves another game here, and it looks like it's gonna be a mirror match, so this is gonna be interesting. Let's see. No, no. you go back, you go back, you go back. All right, so he's going first, which means potentially I get the stride first. Hopefully I get a blaster, dark revenger, abyss in hand. Oh, there it is, my boy. <laughs> Because now I could retire a Judge Bow for pretty much nothing. Alright, cool. I got a really, really good hand. So, in the mirror match, assuming he's playing uh, the Abyss support, it's going to be important to try and keep uh, Charon on the field. That way, I can use it to sack. Hmm. Okay. So I'm gonna take this one. Oh, that's one chair and gone. That's no good. I wanna guard this one. Then I'm gonna protect the vanguard. Or, no, not protect the vanguard. I'm gonna take the vanguard attack. And if I get a door on the top deck, that'll make life a little bit easier. Nope. Alright, so I'm gonna play mana. The tired Judge Bow here. It's interesting that he's playing uh, Dark Heart Trumpeter. He 
because normally like it does help with the call costs but I know space may be limited with the abyss which I'm assuming he's playing because he's playing legion right here or my part here for legion and let's see I'm gonna throw I'm gonna throw mana here that way he can't just drop a 10k and then I'm gonna attack vanguard here and if he guards it that's fine all right so he's just playing abyss which like I was assuming which means it's interesting that he has Dark Heart Trumpeter in there as his non. Also, he's gonna hold himself. Okay, let's see what we do here. I don't particularly mind him uh, stick, sticking that too, because it allows me to potentially go for the abyss play sooner. So I'm gonna try to put some pressure on him. I got a nice little hand now. How'd he leave? That's so annoying. <laughs> he was mad. I don't know why he left, but I may as well. I could make that the last one. Just because I know this video has been going on for a good little while now. It's like probably like 20 minutes at this point. I don't want to. But then I don't want to leave you guys out of bad game. That's really annoying. I don't know why he left. Oh well. <laughs> We'll make this for the last game regardless of what happens. Now he's playing Kangaro, so he might be playing the cross here. I guess the cross, I can kind of shut it down with the fact that I retire my own rear guards. I got a good hand here. Um, let's put Mana back. Let's put Doran back. I only have three Doran here, as you guys saw, so I'll, I'll put the PG back. Normally I will want to ride the PG first, but we'll see how things go. Alright, that's got it right back. <laughs> so my hand's not the greatest thing. I'm actually gonna go ahead and ride the PG first like I just talked about. Cause at least here I can retire this guy. Cause I'm assuming it's the cross, I'm gonna play it as it's, as it is the cross. Or Nobel, because normally the cross plays the regular thing. I'm gonna take it so I can retire. Uh, red pulse here. It's dead. Oh, that sucks. Oh well. All right, so we'll go with the plan here: ride blaster, dark revenger, call out abyss, tire that, call Doran behind it, and then I'm just gonna go, go aggressive with it. Cause since I went first, I don't, I'm not at a, at a big disadvantage. Like if I have to hold a turn. Still not a great three. Oh, he's playing Rebirth. That's interesting. Haven't seen Rebirth in a long time, but this should be fun. All right, so since I might potentially be stuck, the game plan here, since he's not playing pure stride, don't feel judged about yet. Yeah, thought so. You got another thing in here? You don't have two soul, yo. <laughs> But yeah, against against rebirth, he's gonna try and cut down on my rear guards. Gonna take that one to the dome and then protect my rear guards. I assume that's where he's going with it. Yeah, there he is. Come on, <laughs> that hurt. So yeah, check this. Check it again. If I can chop down his rear guards, that means he has less things to use for rebirth because he's at three damage already. 
Mm, do I want to call out Dora and just leave my hand down there? No, because I need it for GSS purposes. So he has rebirth and then a heal. No, the heal. Yeah, the heal's in his hand too, so he can use that. Pretty sure we check the heal. But as long as I keep his rear guard count low, and then I check the heal, so that's funny. <laughs> oh, and he has some stride stuff, so that's interesting. Let's see. Here, draw. Right. So he has four cards. You could rebirth me if you really wanted to, but I wouldn't mind that too particularly much. So I'm gonna keep going to the Vanguard, because he's gonna have to protect himself, or he's gonna go to five, five or six damage. So now he's gonna have to burn two cards in his hand to protect himself. I don't know why he didn't guard that easy attack. One important thing to remember in Vanguard is guarding effectively. Because maybe he was thinking I was gonna go into a rear guard. Because either way, he had to give up the rear guard anyway. So I don't know why he didn't take the easy attack for the 10k and save um, Berserk Dragon over here. So now it just made my life a little bit easier, and now he can't rebirth because of it. Because for all intents and purposes now, I can G assist into Abyss, Legion, and go for game. take that one and then he's either gonna end this turn because I have one counter blast. <laughs> Why? Alright, for the biscuit. Cause if I G assist into my third abyss I can push for game. Wow, that's absurd. Well, <laughs> we might be losing this one, folks, so that's okay. Let's see. Oops, I didn't want to put that there. See, push this up. Let's see, I have no real pressure going for me right now. Let's try and chop down on the rear guard. I had Tech Desert Dragon on this side. He has Gatling Claw. I'm going to attack Vanguard. That's one to pass. So that's 21 on 16. If I hit a trigger, I get through it. So I put 6, you put the door in right there. The hell? Alright. That's all. Come on, deck. Give me something. Nope. Late. Oh well. Let's see. His computer may be laggy, so that's probably why he's going a little bit slower. That it happens sometimes. So since this since this came late, he could rebirth me. Well, maybe not, because he has to draw, so he has to use one card. So I could potentially still survive the following turn. And then if I top deck Abyss, I can still have a chance, but having the three of my grade threes go to the go to the damage zone hurt a lot. So I'm gonna go this into the Vanguard. He has protected because he's at five. He's probably gonna use the Gatling Claw that's in his hand or not. All right. So if he hits a if he hits a critical trigger upcoming here, then that's that's a good game to me. Yeah, he has all that stuff too, so that's why that's why he took it. There's no way I can. I need a heal trigger on the on the six damage to bail myself out of this one. Or 
he needs to hit no triggers here. I need to hit a trigger. To hopefully a draw trigger, that'd be ideal. On the back end here, and then I should have enough to survive. As long as he doesn't hit a trigger at all. And he is a crit, so that's unfortunate. So, there's a trigger I need. I could hit a heal. Nope. Alright, that's a good game there. Not the most ideal game because... And I was gonna get a Abyss next turn. And then there was a heal behind it. <laughs> oh well. So, I tried to showcase the deck to you guys. And I didn't have the best quality opponents, but that's what happens when you come on the CFA and play against people you don't know. You play against uh, some of the, the random crowd that's around. But I hope you guys got a gist of what the deck was all about. And until next time, guys, peace.